thank you all for tuning back in to your favorite channel, Pelican Bay K9s, giving it to you the way I always do. Fair and unbiased, some gonna like it, some ain't, man. Y'all hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that like button before you get up out of here. Big salute to all the brothers and sisters down in the chat. Big salute to all the brothers and sisters down in the chat. Now, if you haven't subscribed to that channel, go ahead and subscribe. Now, you're going to miss these exclusive interviews. You know, hope everybody having a great New Year's to start the year off. Got an exclusive interview for you. Like I say, salute to all the dog lovers from one side of the country to the other side of the country, from one side of the world to the other side of the world. Let's get into it. I'm in the building with Mr. Johnny today, and we're going to talk some of that old school dog talk. How you doing, my brother? Doing fine, doing fine. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. How how about how your holidays been going for you, man? They've been going good. Uh, everything had a good Christmas, New Year's. Um, I'm tell you a little bit about me. Um, uh, I had I, I had my father had uh he had he had hunting dogs and and he had to pit dogs too. That was all. I was back in the fifties when I was just a young young boy. Uh, I remember seeing Mr. Wesley Truitt when he was a young man, but I was like about ten, about ten years old or something like that. And uh, but my brother, my daddy had some of the old, um, the old M uh, J M Price dogs. Uh, you may see a dog way back there, uh, uh, Howard Teal's uh, Teal's Jake. He was a Trice dog. Yes, sir. A Trice bred bloodline, and uh, I later. I, you know, I, I took care of the dogs and all that, and they used to have used to have shows back on my uh, grandparents' property. And they uh, that that today belongs to the Southern 500 race car track. The, uh, they bought all that property from my family uh, after my grandparents passed away. And uh, so later on, I got into uh, as far as Mr. Teal was concerned, my father was good friends with him. <laughs> And uh, one of Mr. Teal, Mr. Howard Teal's uncle, he married one of he married uh, one of my aunts, and he he run a, a barber shop in 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 my hometown, and so we knew him real well. And my first dog that I pit bull I ever owned came from Mr. Teal, and I, I knew him, and also my father knew him good. And so when, what really got me on into the dogs was actually. Was one was a, the, that last second show? Uh, Red Bo uh, Bass's Red Boy was in, where he went against that female dog, and that's where I met the Jackson fella, and we became dog partners. And so uh, w we got our dogs started through two little uh, Orby Copeland bred dogs. They were basically Hensel dogs that were obtained through uh, Don Mayfield. Okay. And so we were kind of Mayfield uh, fans for a good while, but I was more or less the silent partner, and because of my, you know, my job and, uh, and all of that, I stayed kind of out of the limelight. I went with, with a lot of places, seen a lot of things, knew a lot of people uh, in that in that seventies era, seventies yeah. and eighties, uh, that time era. I knew pretty and definitely all of the all of the that were in South Carolina. Yes, sir. Yes, and so sir. That's, that's kind of where I started. And uh, we um, we made two breedings, and Don would not let us make any line breedings. We, we bred one breeding off that Mayfield Shun, Sunshine Dog and another breeding uh, off of uh, that Mayfield Snake Dog. And, and those, were the, those, were the, those turned out to be just some really exceptional dogs. Uh, Frank Jacobs kept up. We, we had little dogs. We didn't have big catch weight dogs. We had little small dogs running 32 pounds, 35 pounds, about the biggest we had. We might have went around 37 something pounds. And so, but dominantly we had the small dogs. And Frank Jacobs kept up with us for a while there. He told, he told my partner, he said, I was standing there with him, he said, uh, y'all want, you won 29 shows. You've won 29 shows with those dogs. And, uh, and of course, as time went by, it's like anything else. Uh, it's like a winning football team. Over time, you start losing your older dogs and whatnot. And so, mm -hmm. you know, you don't, you ain't going to consistently keep on winning like that. You, you really have to regroup and start again and so on and so on. 
but that's where I that's where I got started. Right out there with old old Red Boy. I knew that Red Boy doll really good. Uh, I saw all of his siblings. I know where he came from. Uh, I know all four about four versions of the see that what they always miss out on is just the sire. Yeah. The sire of the Red Boy. Uh, there's about four different versions on that, and the one that makes the most sense to me is the one, and you, uh, I'll try to contact him and see if he'll have a talk with you. Is He goes under the name EWO on the, the Pitbull Bible uh, database site. Yes, sir. Which, which I was a moderator on there for several years, and I, I just reached about six or eight months ago. I, I kind of dropped off. But um, I corrected a lot of bad pedigrees on that site, and uh, made made diligent, you know, checking out pedigrees with the online sped, and then there's several other pedigree sites that I, I, you know, I could go to, and I would pick the. When you had two out of, you had a question on a pedigree. If you had two out of the three agreeing, I, I would all, I would put the put the one that did. Two out of three, uh, you know, agreed on. Yeah. But I corrected a lot of bad pedigrees on that site, <clears throat> and uh, as, and of course later on, uh, as time went by, uh, uh, the, my dog partner he kept the older stock of dogs, and then I started working toward some Carver dogs. I started working with that, and I started getting really good results with that. And then finally, when I got out of the dogs. My partner, he he went he went down south, and he took everything off my yard and his yard, and he went down there, and I I hadn't even looked at looked looked any of these dogs for a lot of years, and as I messed more and more on these computers, on his PCs and all, I just entered the name uh, Young's Jake. That was one of my dogs, Young's Jake. Mm -hmm. His pedigree come up, and I saw the siblings, I saw this and that. <laughs> you know, re re interested in it all because it's like an addiction to you. Mm -hmm. When you ever get it in your blood, it's hard to ever get it out. Yeah, <laughs> it's, just, it's just something that's there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I, um, I'm gonna get to this other stuff in a minute, but we're trying to get a little history here. Uh, I contacted my buddy; he was doing well, and he had the dogs had stayed intact for right at forty years just like we had them bred. And a lot of people used them for the good or the bad, and there's some still still being used today. But a lot of a lot of you dog men, if you get some successful dogs, they're not going to tell you where they come from. Yeah. And that was kind of the case in, in that, with that case. And um, uh, but he's, he's down about four dogs now. I don't know what's producing and what's not. And they, those dogs are getting about six, six to eight years old maybe. And so the way he was talking with his health and all, yeah. I don't know if he'd be any much, you know, much longer anyhow. Yeah. Let me ask you a question but, real quick before I forget it because you was – Okay, uh, go ahead. Um, I heard you say something about the red boy. You seen the uh, red boy in the um, female show? Uh, I did. Uh, my partner saw the first one with the fang cape, William Cable's fang dog. Okay. Uh, the, you know, I, the outcome might have had, would have been the same because – you know, like I say, you can't make excuses if you go on through with it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, that thing dog was really sick. He he was uh, throwing up and all that. And so, you know, that Red Boy won that one. Let me first say something about Red Boy. He was a good game dog. Yeah. I saw him game tested. I'm talking about severely game tested on a big old. It was a big old pit bull, Great Dane cross. Uh, and that dog, I, I mean, I wrote several things about it. Sometimes I make the weight get bigger and the weight get lower. You know how that is. But he was a well over, he had to be well over a 100 pound dog. He was a monster. And it was in the middle of July, hot. Down here we had that, you know, kind of, kind of summers we have down here. It was in July. And uh, they, they, I, I saw this. I saw this personally. I was there personally. And uh, Mr. McDougal, who had a, a, a full brother, the Red Boy, uh, his that dog was called Happy. Uh, Mr. McDougal and me, and there was some others. I don't remember everybody's name exactly, but 
he, uh, he put a he put a put his way that dog was skull skull dragging him dragging him around and finally when he finally broke loose and he he faced him up he made a, a wobbly scratch right back into that dog mm. and so then 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 later they they matched him two times now he had heartworms and uh I don't know how bad an extent the heartworms was on the first go round with the uh, fang dog, but on the second second show, he uh, they gave him a heartworm treatment. Mister Till had a veterinarian that he sent the veterinarian to school, and when he come back home, he built him his own, built him the building and everything, put him in business. Mister Till was a businessman. He owned a lot of a lot of land and everything in Waysboro, North Carolina, and he had that Bowman, what was called a Bowman restaurant, and uh, he put that young man and in, in, sent him off to veterinary school. And it was he was he he was uh, Mr. Till's personal vet, and so, but back then the heartworm treatment was arsenic, mm. and you had to be real careful. If you kill all the heartworms at one time, the dog would die. And so he went through an arsenic treatment, which is really hard on the dog's system. And so, so, so when he got through with all that and gave him a little rest in time and all, they, uh, you know, they come out on, on that that La Posse, that female, I don't know if La Posse owner or who owned her. La Posse was the one that made the challenge. I was standing there when they made the challenge. And, uh, of course, Mr. Till, he was telling Bass, telling Bass, and I want to say first, I'm not a great fan of Bass. Yeah. Uh, he was telling Matt that um, uh, hold on a minute because they were going to bring a female, you know. Yeah. And uh, Bass made the statement that uh, he said, "I don't care if she, they bring her dead in heat. If she bites him, he'll kill her." Damn. That's how confident he was. And so that everything went through, and and I and that's when that's when I I saw that show, that one. And that's when I met my dog partner. We met it. We met that same day. He come the first time to see the first one, and then the second one when he came. That's when I met him, and I saw the second show. Now, Red Boy was a he was a smart head dog, and uh, when that bitch hit him, he she was she was a storm bomber. Uh, she just ran. I mean, she just nailed him. And she hit him hard in the shoulder. Well, he he reached over and just reached right over and caught her right across the bridge of her nose, took her right out. Dang. And, and then finally, then she might got into his back end. He just uh, he was a very or a very heavy muscle dog. He was limber, and he he was a very intelligent dog. He just reached back there, caught her across the bridge of her nose, took her out of there. And and when he got that, when he get those good nose holes, he would stay in holes, and he would. A lot of people said he didn't have no bite; he had a soft mouth. He he was what. See, a lot of people don't understand the difference between a snatching, tearing dog and a dog that is a hard pressure biter. Mm-hmm. And that's what he was. He was a hard pressure biting dog. He had that hole, and you see him clamp down. You see him clamp down and clamp down. And he got a real good nose hole on that dog. I don't know how many minutes they were into the show, but she finally couldn't take it no longer. And she broke loose and tried to run. He grabbed her into the grabbed her in the shoulder, but she tried to run. And they, you know, they had a handle, and then she wouldn't scratch. Mm. But that's how that show went down. Ah. Yeah. Like- and he, uh, but I know all of. See, let me tell you. <laughs> I really want to hear the rest of the story. <laughs> oh yeah, I figure you don't want to talk about Red Boy today. <laughs> I got some, I got some more questions. We can talk about Hank okay, in, get, in, in a little while, but, but but go ahead and get, uh-huh. tell me that Red Boy stuff because there's a lot of it's a lot of, it's a lot of excuse me, I didn't mean to cut you off. It's a lot of yeah. unanswered questions when it comes to Red Boy and so like you said, yeah. so many different stories and everybody oh, right. claimed they know the stories. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. First of all, the tramp, the tramp dog that they say was the side of the red boy. Now that's the one that the Carolina, I don't know, if, I don't know if the, the PD kennels fellas, they kind of want to run with that. And then there's some others as well. 
But the tramp dog, whether he was a sire rib boy or not, I don't know. He was a dog they picked up off the street. I think he was a brindle dog. Well, that dog was matched into Baker Davis's boomerang. It might have been his, the first time Baker Davis matched boomerang. He 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 campaigned that dog through eight years of his life. He was a grand champion. In fact, the last dog he went into was another dog of Mr. Teal's, was bred similar uh, to the Red Boy stuff out of some of that. Uh, uh, it was his last show. And he was right at eight years old at that time, and he won over that dog, uh, Mr. Teal's. But um, that tramp dog, I never saw him. Um, and I say, if you find, you go back and find the old, uh, Baker, maybe to find a whole listing on Baker Davis's uh, boomerang dog and the list of the opponents. Yeah, you'll see one of them, probably one of the early ones of him, Mister Teal. And I'm pretty sure that was the tramp dog that he used in that show. And uh, but the, the the other version is one that's like 35 years apart. Mister Egan Skinner, which was a dog partner with Mister Teal. Very good dog man, his own self. He had some really good dogs. Uh, some a lot of that Lightner stuff and all. Uh, him, and Dean, him and Dean Clemens had those. Uh, they had they had some of the red nose Lightner dogs from Hempfield, and they had some of the other the later uh, later Lightner bloodline that he started breeding later on. They had some of that, and they were trying to revise that bloodline, and uh, some of the best of them got drowned down on Mister Egan Skinner's yard. Uh, he had a creek running around behind his house when he lived in North Carolina, and, and so they got drowned. And then uh, they later he later moved to Charleston and took what dogs he had left there. And uh, Mr. Dean Clemens, I never got to meet. I wish when I was visiting with Joe Bill, I wish that I'd have went and tried to visit with him and some of them other dog men that I, and also with Sonny Shropshire. He knew some of the older dog men like Steve Ham and those guys. And I wish I'd have took the time to have gone and, you know, visited with them and, and talked with them. But the the, the version uh, that that Mister Egan told me was that the red boy dog was he thought he thought was off the tip off the teal's tip, mm. and that was a dog. Them dogs were bred by Mister Egan Skinner, uh, Mister Teal's tip, Teal Susie Q. Uh, La Posse had one called La Posse's Beanie, but I don't know if she was exactly the same bred the same way, but I believe she was. And then there was uh, maybe a couple more of them, but uh, that's what that's what he told me. That was that was like 35, 40 years ago when I was when I just got into the dog game and, and I started coming up to Mister Teal, Mister Mister Teal's restaurant, and visiting with him and whatnot. And then the thirty five years or so later. Uh, um, Tom Gardner called me and he invited me to come to one of his pig pickings. And we, and uh, some come, I asked him something about uh, that red boy dog or whatever. And uh, he told me that uh, when he called Mr. Teal right before he died, Mr. Teal had a heart attack. In fact, I was with him when they, we, they went down to Georgia. And I drove him down there and then I drove him back. He, he wouldn't go to an emergency room like he should have. But he went on, made me drive him all the way back to Waysboro with wow. having a, had had a, a heart attack, and and uh, we was afraid he was going to die in the car. And anyhow, he he called Mister Till right. He said right before he died, and he asked him that same question: What was the sire of the Red Boy dog? And Mister Till told him it was the Till's Tip dog. So that's the two versions of that. From like thirty five years apart, me not even knowing Tom Gardner that well, and so and then the other one, which I think is more correct, is uh there was a there was a black man in North Carolina. His name was Krebs, Krebs or Krebs. I never never I never could get that the correct pronounce you know the correct spelling and all. Yeah, but he got he got, and the reason why I say this is a few months before. Not long before Mr. Mims died, EWO taught him. EWO was very good friends with Mr. But uh, Mr. Mims, Carl Mims, yes, sir. and he he used a lot, he used a lot of Mr. Mims' dogs, 
and uh, and Carl told him. He said that the Red Boy dog and the Cables, William Cable's Fang dog, were closely related. That's what he told me. Mm. So that takes you to the that takes you to the uh, cribs, the cribs, the crib story. And he, there was a man named Stidham. He was a game cocker, and he kept some of he kept some pit dogs on his yard. And where he got them from. Because Mr. Bob Hempfield was, he, he messed with a lot of game chickens too. He liked game chickens, and then he had that strand of red nosed dogs that he, you know, him and some of them other fellas, you know, kept, kept them in, kept them bred intact. And he got those dogs that he got were straight Bob Hempfield red nosed dogs. Uh, being that he was a game cocker, he was very strict on gameness. And he would take them dogs, the ones that he would keep and breed from. He would take them and, and test them hard and put them up. You know, now if it didn't scratch during the testing, that was the end of them. But if it went through that testing, he would put them up, get them back out the next morning when it all stove up, and see if they'd go again. And that's the ones he kept for breed. And the Krebs fella used the same method. And so. A lot of those North Carolina men around there, dog men, a lot of times they used his dogs, but they never gave him no credit. Mm. And so, so the Stidham dogs, when you look at some of the Stidham pedigrees, you, know, you might find, I believe some of it's in that thing dog, I'm pretty sure. But you'll see it goes back a lot, of, it goes back to Bob Hempfield's dogs. And then, uh, then they maybe some of Maybe some of Mr. Cable's bloodline in there, and maybe some of, uh, 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 there was another man named called Long, L O N G Long. I used to know his first name, uh, maybe some of his dogs as well. But regardless, the dog, uh, the dog was predominantly Hempfield blood. That's okay. probably to me the way he looked. Uh, he didn't look like no Kobe dog. There ain't no, I had my dogs were Hensel dogs. With Handy Kobe breeding in them, the first dogs I had, they looked like Kobe dogs. They were white, brindles, red brindles, whatever they come, patch colors. They were they were all uh, they looked like Kobe dogs. Red boy does not look like a Kobe dog. He never looked like a Kobe dog. He looked more like a, a, a standard, like the old um, um, Pete Sparks's. He used to have a little a dog. A dog image he put on his magazines that was considered a perfect confirmation look of a of a pit bull terrier. So see, they bull terriers and not bulldogs. They bull terriers, and that's the dog. That's he looked similar. He looked like that type of dog. Uh, he was long dog and real a heavy muscle dog. But uh, I think I think that's what he was. Uh, even though we we'll we won't never know the real truth on the sire because everybody's dead yeah. and everybody has everybody has their version of what they were told just like I just gave you two versions here uh, and Mr. Krebs I'm Krebs or Krebs he's no longer living that would have been the man to have talked to uh, but uh, and and so yeah. so that's that's probably where it's real we'll we will never really ever know <laughs> no you're right <laughs> you know about that? that you're right about that you take that bow dog, and I'm listen. I'm not talking. I, I said I argued about it on on the, on the, on that site. But some 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 dog men had stated and they put a pedigree on the on that bow dog on that uh, Bob Finley's. I think Bob Finley's bow dog. Yes, sir. They, they were saying that uh, they were saying that uh, the Laposse had told him that he was out of the bullet two or bullet three dog or something like that. I don't. I ain't talking about the bottom side. I'm talking about the top side. And uh, if you go on and look at the, look at the pictures of the bow dog sire, he was a solid black dog, and they Kobe dogs don't come black. And uh, you see a lot of those black with white in the chest dogs through them bullet dogs. Mm. But you know, I argued with them that the pedigree is what it is. It's been like that for a long time, unless Mister. Uh, Mr. Finley wants to change it. That's that's him, you know. Yeah. So that's the way it was. Mm-hmm. And I say you can't get you can't go in there and change the stuff because unless you talk to the owner uh, and and, uh, and see what he wants to do about it, and and uh, and see 
Laplace, he, he, he was in the he was in the dog puppy selling business. He was <laughs> not a dog man per se as a lot of the fellas you talk to. Yeah, yeah. He, and if you went out, you went there, and his uncle would do the same thing. I knew his uncle. His name was uh, Atlas Lamb, I believe. We, uh, me and Andy, me and Andy, out another good little dog man, bit right around me here. He he stayed out of the limelight, and uh, he did real good. But he uh, he um, we went out there and visited Mister Lamb, and he walked out there with a stack of papers, better be papers. <laughs> yeah. And if we if we whatever we'd ask for, <laughs> we'd be looking at that that dog or whatever we'd ask for. He he walked you out a dog. <laughs> He's shuffling up. Here, here's your paper. <laughs> Dang. Dang. Yeah, that's a lot of and, and, and Mr. T, and Mr. LaFosse, he I ain't saying he didn't breed some good dogs now. I mean, when you got that Buster dog and all. Uh-huh. Uh, but I had some of that, and, and I, I, I was building a yard on, on that and that Jeremiah stuff, and I was I was getting some exceptional dogs. Uh, and uh, he... Uh, but he, you know, he put his daughters through college and all with, with the help of selling them dogs. Mm-hmm. And so if you walk around here like three uh, p- puppy pins of dogs and you went in there and started asking for a specific this or that, he had it. You know, that, that's that's what them are right over there. <laughs> Dang. Now, let me but, you know, I ain't seen all of them like that. You know, yeah, you, yeah. you don't know. Yeah, you never know. But, but, but I just know, I do know this, a guy, here in Hartsville, South Carolina. He had, this was back in the 70s, and you had Mr. You had Mr. Ganey and Mr. Truett and all them fellas. Mr. Truett, they still love yeah. they, they still loving Mr. Truett stuff on my side of town. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, he, uh, uh, that, uh, that Kobe, this guy had a whole bunch of them Kobe dogs. He bought them from La Posse. He had a whole kennel of them. And uh, I went and talked with him one time and asked him about them and whatnot and found out where they were from and all. And uh, but not none of us ever bought a dog from him. Mm. Uh, they just the dogs. He, when you can take them and put them all together in one kennel, one pen kennel, and put this one and that one together <laughs> and whatnot, hey, something wrong with that picture. Hey, something wrong and with that's that what's picture. going on with these. People. That's what these people are today. But they, I don't know what kind of dogs were they really full blooded pit bulls or what they are. A little boy just got mauled today on, on the darn knees by eight pit bulls. Damn. Now, were they little puppies? Were they puppies that jumped on him, you know, trying to play with him and biting on him? Or was it dogs, you know? And what were they? I mean, I see a lot of dogs called pit bulls or the Amstaffs or Amstaff mixed up dogs. Mm hmm. They, I fellow got one right down the road here, and and the sucker, he could be dangerous if he's with a small dog. You know, if he's with a couple of little small dogs that are run at you and yap at you and bite at you, that's going to rile him up, and you don't know where it's going to go from there. Mister mm-hmm. Till was right. He told me. He told me. He said these dogs are not for the public. Don't sell them to the public. Yep, because the act. They that, ain't no good. Oh, go ahead. Put them to sleep. Put you know, don't don't sell them. The only ones I ever saw go to the public was a guy that hog hunted, and back then they didn't use them them uh, aprons on the dogs. Mm-hmm. And of course, the life expectancy of a catch dog ain't very long catching wild boar. Yeah. Uh, they they these don't last maybe a year or two at the most. And so, but I'm starting to ramble now. You got to get me back on the subject. <laughs> Oh no, you're uh, good. You're good. Yeah, I, I want to ask you some things about um, um, I didn't mean to cut you off. I wanted to ask yeah, you about. Right. I want to ask you about Hank. You know, um, when it comes to Jocko, do you think Hank produced a better litter than the litter that Jocko's produced from? Oh yeah, uh, uh, that Hank though was a well-bred dog. He went back into the, the better. I always thought was a better dog. Everybody still there? Yes, I'm here. Oh, sorry about that. It was that. Uh, stock, uh, like Stockton's Liz, uh, 
Uh, I think that Womack Mert dog was in there. Some of them dogs, um, I always thought they were the better dogs that he had. And, uh, um, and of course, he, you know, he used a lot of other people's dogs. Uh, you got to remember, Don Mayfield wasn't no young guy. Mayfield come up in the fifties with people like Mister Teal. He knew Mister. They knew each other really well. And uh, Maurice Carver and all them guys, they were like the fifties, more or less sixty. Even though they did do some, some of them did some stuff up on into the seventies and maybe eighties, but they were they were they were not they were not a. Uh, they were more like the uh, the fifties, uh, mid fifties or so type dog men. Yeah. And uh, and there at the end there, he wasn't. That, he was. He was a Don Mayfield was a tall man. He could have played. For, he could have been. He could have been on a pro basketball court. He'd be tall as a lot of them basketball players. He was real tall. Wow. I saw him make a. I saw him make a. He made a joke out of Irish Jerry <laughs> at a at a show. <laughs> When that that easy that he his Mayfield dog was called Easy, and uh, she was a, a Red Bill bloodline, Tudor's Red Bill, which that was a real good bloodline. That Mayfield State come out of that. They that was a some of these bloodlines are catalysts for these dogs today. Yeah. The that Red Bill blood was a good catalyst for the Dibo dogs. The uh, the uh, uh, that Creel blood that I had got had managed to get hold to. That was a good catalyst blood for a lot of your car blood. And it was one man that talked with me. He had some of it and wish he'd never lost it. But, uh, but yeah, the, the, the Hank doll, he was, he would not take hold till he was about, he was close to three years old. Mm. I think what fired him up was Vernon brought him down here to my yard. I put him on my yard. I and mean, back then I could have bought him for a hundred dollars if I'd have wanted him. But he just wouldn't do nothing. You know? But he put him on my yard, and there he ran a bunch of strange dogs and all, and he started firing up. And so then we went over to, maybe a few months later, we went over to, uh, to another fellow. He was not kin to, he was not kin to Wesley, but his name was Woody Truitt. Yes. And he had some dogs and bought a, bought a couple of Carver dogs. And he had a Amstaff dog that he called Obi. And he won one or two with that dog. And so we were just, you know, showing some dogs that day. And so he brought that Obi dog there. In fact, we didn't even, we did it down there by the woods and just let him go. And that, that, that Hank dog, he started, he started getting it on. And boy, he got in that dog's shoulder and all. He started, you just start seeing some bad things happening. <laughs> and I said, dang. And when Vernon saw all that, and so we, we still had him in, me and me and the Alboy, we had him, and we we worked him to go into uh, to go into uh, Rick's bird. He had a, ch- a champion dog or a dog going for champion. He called Arizona Pete, real gorgeous, nice looking dog, and a good. He was a well bred dog, and uh, what Andy did most of the work on the dog. And uh, when it come time to go to the to the show. I couldn't go. They, they called me in and made me go to work because I, you know, I worked for a, 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 a telephone company, and they called me in. And I didn't have no choice. I, I hated that, but I did get there. Made made it up there afterwards. But anyhow, they ended up the Hank dog and the Arizona Peak dog. What happened? Andy kept they let the dog get into uh, some wet straw in a barrel. And he and he got a little touch of mange. A little mange. He didn't have the mange, but he got a little bit of it, uh, skin irritation on him. And uh, Rick saw it. He he made Vernon. He made Vernon tell him uh, agree to him if his dog caught the red mange. From but he was so confident he was going to win. You know, uh, uh, he he'd have to pay the vet bill or something. And Vernon said, "Sure, yeah," <laughs> but he had. They put put that show off to the last because everybody else thought they were more important, and that was the show that brought the house down. Hmm. And and he and he didn't even get the best of show because they didn't give it to somebody else. They they just thought it was just going to be a little blowover deal, and uh, he he, uh, he wiped he wiped that Arizona Red Dog out. Wow! And then later he matched him into Irish Jerry or and. Uh, 
he had a little dog called Red Eye, a gorgeous little, a gorgeous dog, uh, and a very good dog too. And I think I I thought he might have been out of some of the Ho- uh, the Holtz fan the, the Holtz's dogs in Texas because yeah. they were up there. Him and his wife were up there, and so. I was. I did. I, I took everything that Vernon didn't. He did. I was a good. I, I tried to. I had to keep it. Keep 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 Vernon. Try to keep it straight. Because I, I tell him, uh, I, I went and got. Uh, I made sure I had a big old flashlight. I took it and I, and I took a thing to check the scales and all that. And so I was the one that did the washing. Okay. And Jerry. He want to hang, hang when he come to my dog. He want to hang dog. He want to hang the hang dog up there and walk around him and walk around him and walk around him and look at him. And I told him, I said, "What's the matter? The dog's on wait. You can see it right there. There's no, that's enough of that." And so we got him down. And then when we get ready to wash him, Jerry had a pan of hot scalding water, mm. and I saw the steam come off of it. And I, I touched it. I said, "You." you you sorry rascal, you want to try to scold my dog. And I made him bring cold water and get it back down to where you know where it'd be good. And, and then after we wa- after they washed him, uh, you know, of course I need to back up on the other dog. When he washed his dog, you no, know, his dog had to wash second. So after we got him washed, Vernon, you know, cook him. And then when we washed his dog, he wanted to grab his dog up and take him on to take him on to the show with with him soaking wet. And soap on him. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to bring, reel him back in again and made him walk, rinse the dog and dry him off good. And so I got through all that. So then we got out there. When he let him go, the the the, the red eyed dog he, he got the first hold, hit the shoulder. The hang dog reached over and caught the other shoulder on him, broke his shoulder. And, and then I mean, he broke that shoulder, and then he finally went there to the back end on the back leg and that joint there. And the referee was watching all this. He was—he didn't have no business being a referee. He was watching it. And when when he bit that back leg, the back leg just broke. You, you hear the crack sound. And he, he started throwing up. Dang. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, he got <laughs> Taught the referee. And then after that, it was but a massacre after that. The referee started throwing I'll, up? Say why that? The referee start throwing up. Yeah, the referee start throwing, <laughs> throwing up. And, and and then uh then after all that, uh they kick they kicked the lights out. The generator all of a sudden just went off. And then I put the light, I cut my light on, and kept the light on on the dogs, make sure nobody Jerry and them tried to keep the dog or yeah. do something to him. And so one they realized they could. And I had a good bright light, a big beam light. And they, they couldn't realize they couldn't do nothing there. And then they, all of a sudden, the generator lights come back on. And so, uh, when, uh, then the final thing that he did, and I don't know what that referee was waiting on, it come time for the red eyed dog to scratch. The dog tried to make a scratch. He was a good dog. I'd love to have him. He, he staggered over to the pit wall up against the wall on his corner. He fell up against the wall, leaning on it, trying to stand. And Jerry goes over there and starts calling him. Jerry, Jerry had a, Jerry had him about a, a 30, a 35 second scratch. <laughs> to call him down the, the wall and then try to call him back. <laughs> I asked her, Vernon asked her, when is this thing over? I said, just, that dog's, that dog can't, that dog, Dead on his feet. And so then that was the end of it. And then what made matters even worse, he took that dog and went back behind that big, big uh, shed and threw him down on the ground. And the cold, it's the cold wintertime in Georgia, threw him down on the ground. And he was back there flopping around like a fish out of water. And Mr. Mr. Sharon, Mrs. Sharon Hope walked by and saw it. Oh my Lord. And she went and got Crenshaw. Mm. He come around there and saw it. He called Mr. Jerry over there, and I ain't gonna tell you what he what all he had to say to him. Yeah. He told him to take the dog out there somewhere and put it out of his misery. And if he ever saw him do something like that again, he would never be back on his premises. 
Yeah. And uh, bad sportsmanship. I mean, I, I like though Jerry. I knew him all the way back before he even had some dogs. He was a uh, he go down. He was in, go down there, to Florida, or at the dog. Nelson boy he was a stocky, strong guy, and Jerry was going to finger finger wrestle with him, and he started finger wrestling with him, and Nelson broke broke his finger. <laughs> yeah, you know how you know how it is around some of them things. Some of them back then, back then things were a lot calmer than they are now. Yeah, and uh, they they could, when something was going on, they, they they were very very quiet. There was no screaming, hollering, and carrying on. Well, I tell you about that bad, that bad story, that bad of being down there and uh, that termite dog down there in uh, Elizabeth Town. Man, I spent a cold night in, in them, them swamps. Was, that was a bad trip there. Mm. And what happened was they were all screaming and hollering. And the people up at the front, they were like um, two miles up there on the main road. When I drove in there, I had my window roll down. I could hear them. I could hear them all the way down there in the woods, like a football, like a football game going on. I said, "Dang!" In fact, I, we parked our car about a half a mile back in the woods from them and walked down there. And then when they broke loose on that on the night show uh, with termite, I told them, I told my wife to get. We got to. And I didn't make it. She did. Uh, things didn't turn out too bad after after all of that. But I, I told that sheriff I would never, ever go back to – you never see me in a little town again as long as I live. Yeah. And I ain't never been back and ain't not going back. Uh, but uh, but anyhow, that Hank dog was a – he was a – he was actually an ace dog. He was in a class of dog like Bolly B or, or – you know, some of them real super dogs, uh, and he and he did not look like he did not look like them dogs that them dogs are tan. He was a he was a he was about a I think he matched it around thirty eight pounds. Mm. He was a he he was a long wiry kind of wiry wiry skinny built dog, and uh, he had real black eyes, and he was a buckskin with a little white streak through his nose. Think about it, he had white stockings on his feet and all. But he was only bred, as far as I knew, he was only bred two times. He was bred to that Bob Rass Queenie bitch, and he was bred to my, my young Stephen bitch. Why, why, and we got, why they only bred him twice? Or why y'all only bred him twice? He, uh, he died. Okay. Uh, he brought him out again. In fact, uh, he, uh, he got taken on the chain or some way or another on the chain, and he died from heat stroke. Mm, 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 mm. It was during the summertime. Vernon, when he came home, he found him tangled up or whatever, and he was dead. Uh, but, uh, yeah, if he'd, if he'd have lived, name tell me how many good dogs he could have produced. Uh, uh, but uh, he was an exceptional dog. And and that Jeep dog, uh, the, I don't know if it was the next to last or the last show that Jeep had with that homer dog ended up going into that homer dog uh Ozzie Stevenson told me personally and personally up there at Mr. Sharpshire about all that and of course he was not a young man then and uh he started crying he was uh, he that thing bothered him even to this day what he did to you know did to his homer dog but uh I saw Jeep go two times I'm pretty sure it was two times I was not impressed yeah and I know, I know on one of them, if they hadn't have bunched up together, he went over that pit. He was trying to get over. Dang. And what it was, that dog that, uh, oh, what's that fellow's name? He was down in Florida. Uh, I can't think of his name right now. He brought a dog in there. I don't know why he even owned a dog like that. He had some good carver dogs. He, why? And that dog was supposed to have been a carver dog. That dog looked like a half breed basset hound. He had the legs like a basset hound, and the back end, and the big old hound dog ears. And I mean, and he, there's no way he could have conditioned that dog. You can't condition no 
fiddle front dog. A dog that's fiddle front with his feet going out to the sides. Yeah, yeah. You can't run no dog like that. He'll go, he'll go, he'll go, he'll, he'll go cripple on you. So he might have had him in some basic shape. And and when he barn stormed that dog, he he liked to he liked to back into the dog, um, the testicles and all. And so he had him had Jeep scooting around, and he tried to he panicked, you know, and it looked like he wanted to go over that wall. But when he he finally uh, finally come back in, Crenshaw got him calmed down, and then he started fighting. And then as it went on, the conditioning the kid's conditioning started telling the tale. Uh, uh, Mr. Cooper, his name was Cooper, Vince Cooper, I believe it was. That dog was in no way in the condition mm. uh, to even be able to compete against Crenshaw, and. Uh, so once that, you know, Jeep kept the dominance all the way through, and, you know, naturally he won. Now, I don't know if it was the last show or the next last show, he was, James and his combine group, were, we were all down in Georgia somewhere, and he was standing on the back of his uh, pickup truck, and he was hauling out the weight for a Jeep. And he wanted a ten thousand dollar forfeit, and he was hollering out to wait. See, you know, all of us were standing around. Verna said, uh, "Verna at that time had had a, had the backing of a, another fellow. His name was Bass too, but he was not in kin to Randy Bass. He uh, he lived in Georgia. He, you know, he had a big business, sold tires and all kind. He had a real big. He was a big business, wealthy businessman, and he just liked the dogs." And he bagged Vernon. He said, uh, "I got you." I, he said, "I got you back covered." He said, and so Vernon he called out. He called out. He answered that challenge about three or four times, loud and clear. And James would not acknowledge him. What? And finally, Crenshaw came down. Not Crenshaw. Um, Creech. Creech was the name. He came down there and told Vernon that he that James did not want to match into that hang dog. And uh. <laughs> Vernon said, it's not going to be the Hank dog. It's going to be another dog I got called Sundown. Because the Hank dog's 38 pounds, and I think the Jeep dog was 42 pounds or something. He says, I got another dog. That's the dog I'm going to use. But they, they, they would not make the match. He made the challenge. The challenge was answered. He would not make the match. And so Man. there's a lot of goes on that people don't know about back in the back in 70s and all that. A lot of, a lot of what's told today. Uh, unless you unless you actually there and see it, you right about that. Um, yeah, you, you uh, as t- tales get told that uh that that uh, Miss Pujol Red Dog, she was a very good dog. She uh I was here as Pujol Red. Uh, in fact, you know I, I got the I got the, I got the pleasure of whipping Jerry twice. I got it. I got we got him with the Hank dog. Then later on, years later, he came down this part of the country with a little dog, and I had a little. A little dog uh, called Hot Boy. He was a little Maloney Tooth dog, uh, bred over some uh, over that Grand Spruce Red Champion Jack dog. And uh, I had a little friend, a little young man, a friend of mine. He worked him, and uh, it was like thirty-two pounds or something. They were little dogs, hmm. and I and I we 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 beat him beat him that day. And I got I sat down and talked with him before he went and left. And I you know I never talked to him again after that. I was, I didn't I didn't. I didn't just I didn't totally dislike uh, Jerry. I just I just needed just to keep two eyes on him. That's all I knew about it. <laughs> yeah. But with yeah. Pujol, Robert Sweatman had a he had a female called Gold Put, and she was a rental dog. And I think she might have been bred off of that Thor dog. Mm. I'm not sure exactly how she was bred, but she was a r- really hard biting nose dog, and. Uh, he matched into Pooh Hall Red, and uh, Vernon, my friend, my dog partner Jackson, he he uh, he did the conditioning, and uh, he was. And I want to say about Jack, he was an excellent conditioner. He him, him and Crenshaw were on par, on the same level, and they fed basically the same way, except where uh, Crenshaw would use kibble to keep keep. Well, kibble to keep the dog on weight. Jackson would pre-keep a dog on X amount of kibble. He, you know, get him on weight with X amount of kibble. He gave him more kibble. 
he used chicken eggs and chicken bags. He, he, he had more of a meat diet with less kibble. And, uh, uh, but regardless, they, 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 the way they worked, the dogs were very similar. And, uh, but, uh, this dog was in tip top shape. Jerry had Pooh already. She was in really good shape, but that was actually the beginning of the end for her. Mm. Uh, for what she took, what she took in that, she took in that particular show. They really devastated each other. And it come up time, was it once crashed before, Pooh Hall come out. She did come out fast and strong. She come out slow. And uh, so did it come out. And then when it come up for uh, the next time, when it come up for the other dog, with the pudding dog, she was, and she was hurt too now. She was hurt. And uh, could probably keep her legs under. And uh, when it was getting, they were getting ready to scratch her, Atlas Brewer and all that bunch come around there, and they brought anything that was metallic or whatever, and they went just screaming and hollering and just beating, and making all the noise when they released her. When they released uh, Gold Put, they made all the noise that they could possibly make. I mean, screaming and hollering. That ref should have called it on. Hmm. And uh, she hesitated for about three or so seconds looking. She turned her head, and, you know, it startled her. And she stood there about three or so seconds stirring at whatever that was, and then she got refocused on on Putin, and she went, I mean, not Putin, but Pujol, she started her scratch. She was stumbling and started, but she got counted out. So after it was over, and, and then, so then Jerry wanted to do a, he wanted to do a courtesy scratch. When he released Pujol, she ran back behind his legs. She did not come out. Mm. And uh, later, later he matched her again into Mayfield, and Mayfield, Mayfield beat him, beat him real easily, beat him with that easy bitch. And in, even in that show, I was there at that show. He uh, Jerry kept pulling on his dog. She was on the bottom; she couldn't get up. He, she she was pulling on her. And he kept pulling on her, and I'm looking at him. I said, "Man, Jerry, you doing something like that in front of a a, a seasoned dog man like that?" And I was thinking that, you know, and he kept pulling on it. I don't know what he was trying to do. Maybe he was trying to get her to get back up on her feet or something. And finally, finally Mayfield reached down and said, well, Jerry, how, 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 how far you want to snatch him? And he picked both dogs up over his head. And he was about close to six, eight or something. He was high, tall. And Jerry was a little short fella. And he was jumping up now. No, no, I, I, I won't do that. And I'm going to put him back down, put him back down. And he put him back down, and uh, of course she lost. That was the end of her. Dang. Of course, later on down the road, uh, Stenson and Glover, she they wiped out easy with that Zebo, that, that Zebo bitch that they had. Oh, uh, and that's an interesting story in itself. But but anyhow, uh, I'm not I'm not trying to talk bad about. I'm not really not trying to talk bad about dogs. I'm just telling you things I've seen. Oh, yeah. listen, oh yeah. I had, we had we had quitting dogs too. We had dogs quit. All our dogs did not win. Oh yeah, they got beat. And uh, but there's a lot of them. They, they wanted. They were trying to make reputations for themselves, and they want to hide that stuff. And I was thinking, well, you know, I mean, maybe you won't bring. Maybe maybe that particular incident you might not bring that up. But uh, but but anyhow, these you really had to be there to really see some of that stuff and mm-hmm. what goes on and. And, and, I, and listen, I believe, to me personally, and I, I have nothing against Katie Marlowe. I know her real well. I knew her well. Now, she, she told me, and of all of, this was back in the 70s, she had started her own registry. I don't know if Carl Mims took it up or not, but she started her own registry, dog registry. She run a business, with, uh, ran it out, out um, I mean, uh, Trailers and things. She had a trailer park. And she rented out trailers and whatnot. And uh, I was in her trailer. I'd visit her, and I was in her trailer. She was in a real good mood, and we were talking and all. She said, I know how to – she said, I family run down the breeding on that red boy dog. I said, you did? I said, uh, uh, that's interesting. And she, she looked like she was getting ready to tell me, and then some, some people drove up to look at the trailers, 
and she had to stop and go do that. And then we, when we found it, we were out there on the dog yard. She didn't ever bring it back up. So that, that was the closest I come to hearing her version of it. And, uh, but that, but let me tell you about Red Boy. They got him coming from, from the Adams man and the Iron Lion Kennels. He's got his own story. And, but Red Boy was bred out of a litter of puppies by Mr. McLeod. He lived in, uh, Florence, South Carolina. And he advertised in the, Florence Morning News newspaper or whatever. Yeah. And he would advertise pit bull pups for sale. You could buy them for about $85 a pup. That was about what they were going for back in the days, $8,500, whatever. And so he, he that bitch he had, that Susie Q, I think her name was Susie Q. I never saw her. Katie, Katie, Katie saw her, but I never saw her. He, he bred her. He was breeding. When he wanted a breeder, he'd take her to Mr. Teal's. Yeah. And he used one of, his, one of his stud dogs. And so Red Boy was one or two things. He was either Red Boy and the big mag dog, which was a full brother to Red Boy. He was a big, he was bigger than Red Boy. He was a big uh, buckskin black muzzle dog. Uh, rough, rough, rough dog. A lot of times Howard using the school dogs. Uh, he was going to take a look at. And he was a bruiser. I saw him, I saw him rolling, you know, Rolling, rolling him on some dogs a few times. Well, then there was Red Boy, and so Wilbur Martin, this is his name, that's the actual original uh, owner, uh, I would say, the one he, other than Mr. Till, if he had him, he was the original owner of the Red Boy dog. And so it was one or two or days. He either went down there and bought Red Boy as a puppy from uh, Mr. McLeod, or Maybe Big Mac and Red Boy were stud feet, you know, stud feet the pups given back to Howard, yeah. and and Howard might have given Red Boy because he gave you know Red Boy. I mean, Mister Till gave me a pit bull. I wanted a pit bull, a young man. He, you know, he gave me a, he gave me a beautiful buckskin pup. But he didn't give me no papers. He just gave me the dog. Yeah. And then uh, the uh, Red Boy dog. Uh, that might be how Wilbur got Red Boy one way or the other. But, but Wilbur had the papers on the dog. And I'm sure he never would give the bass out the way bass, way, way bass finagled him. Because uh, he did not, he, and I didn't know all that to me and my Andy. I went there and visited him some. We visited him several times. And I think Andy bought a couple of dogs from him. And uh, what he had on his yard was some uh, La Posse Kobe dogs. He had some uh, some of that uh, La Posse Tiger Jack, or I always want to call him Carver's Tiger Jack, but La Posse owned him, uh, that Tiger Jack stuff. And uh, he had some bullet dogs, mm. some of them too. And and then he had Red Boy. He had Red Boy maybe. He could have been anywhere from 14 months to, I don't know, I don't know how many months old he had him, maybe 18 months. But he bred him. He bred him, and I own one of those bitches. Mm. He he bred he bred Red Boy for you know for Bass got him and uh, he bred him and uh, uh, in fact one of the dogs that we lost a hard match to uh, me and Andy Al when first first dog we tried to do we really we it was really an outstanding dog dog show was uh, the dog I had was called Young's Liz she was a she was off of a uh, Red Boy and had a bullet bullet bred dog and. Uh, the one that Raul had was a male to that breed. They were black black dogs, black and white dogs. He, I forgot, I don't know what he remember what he called that dog, but uh, he uh, that's what he used. And uh, and then, uh, but then later, uh, see they were trying to. When you get my age, you start wondering. They were they were. If you go on if you go to the Pitbull Bible database. Uh, actually, sometimes you can enter the name and, and put AP, P, APBT, and sometimes it'll pull all, pull up those pedigrees uh, on, online and also on, on the, uh, well, I used to call it California Jack side, uh, off of his side. It'll, it'll come up. But I listed all the siblings of, of the Red Boy dog, all of his siblings. I had one of them. A full bro- a full brother, the red boy. Some of them, some of them came. They some of them came red nose like him. 
the the uh, Miles Miles on that dog originally Miles Bouncer. He was a Tiger rental, and then there was a and Mr. McDougal had one called Happy. There was a, a crippled man named Theo Hendricks. He had one called Sandy. He was a red nosed dog too, but a real light red nose. And uh, and he might have been. And then that Ford boy, he had one a big uh, a big buck, dark buckskin black muzzle. He had one up. He was a big dog. Uh, I forgot what he called him now, but and the boy's name was Ford. Last name was Ford. And uh, I saw the happy dog at the same time we did the uh, the Hank dog. They brought Mister Duga brought that happy dog over there. And it thought he was blind. He got he'd gotten on somebody's pet. And Mr. McDougal hit him behind the head with a uh, two by four, and it blinded him. But mm-hmm. I always liked him. He was I always liked him overall out of all them dogs. I just liked the smaller dogs, and he, and he was a good looking dog. Uh, they rolled him stone blind, and he he didn't get it on. And when they'd scratch him, he'd he'd smell for the dog. He'd run into the side of the pit and smell for the dog. Uh-uh. And the whole time I ever heard Bass say something like he said, he said, you know, we're probably going to hell for doing something like this to this dog. <laughs> Damn. Damn. So they they were they were gang acting dogs, and no question about it. The reason the reason I didn't hear I didn't use any of them was because I already had the dogs that I had, they had good air. The, the, the particular dogs, uh, the, well, see, Katie started in real, really heavy in, line, inbreeding them off a of red boy. Mm. They had good air, but they didn't show a lot of mouth. I ain't seen every one of them was like that, but they weren't showing any mouth. And they didn't have, uh, when you'd walk them, they didn't have that strong tensile pullet strength. Yeah. And some of them dogs that I had were the same way. They had tremendous air, but they didn't have, and you know, agile and all. But they didn't have that that real strong tensile strength. But when I got some of them Carver dogs, man, oh man, I thought I was I'd got hooked to a dog on diesel engine. Them things were super powerful dogs, <laughs> and so. So I never, I never used any of them, messed with any of them, and uh, of course, Katie sold a lot of them and so forth. And but like I said, I, all the siblings are, I saw them all. Uh, I saw the, there was a female, but she was cold. She was cold. And uh, 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 Miles, his name was Lewis Miles. He shot her. He didn't keep her. And then so all the thing that was left, I believe, was those male dogs. And I, they are listed. I wrote two, maybe two or three good articles on on all of that on uh, on that Pitbull database site. And uh, but Wilbur Martin was the actual uh, owner of the Red Boy Dog, and uh, Bass Bass and Bass ended up with him. And of course, then Bass, but he might he might have never did all that he did if Wilbur had kept him. Uh, uh, but Bass, you know, did what he did. And, of course, Katie, Katie carried it on from there. Yeah. But Katie and Bass, they were partners there for a while. And then another reason with the Red Boy Dogs was anytime the ones that I, I can't, I'm not naming every one of them. I, I know some of these fellows are hardcore Red Boy Dogs, Red, you know, but everyone, everyone that I saw in top competition. Yeah. Where, where you had a bad dog on the other end. It was real end up, I ain't talking about the crosses, I'm talking about just the, the real inbred ones. The, one of them was Frank Jacobs. He had one, of, I think she was a champion. And she matched into that face dog I had. And face, face, face killed her in about two minutes. It was over with. Mm. And, and then he come back with a hybrid cross, and I mean that dog was bad. Frank Frank come back with a with a dog. I don't know where they got that dog from, uh, but she, I think she might have been off maybe that Bose dog, and maybe some red some of that red, red boy cross he had. And she was a monster, and they, and and Andy did the work on the dog. Was out in the PD swamps, and they uh 
was using uh, generating lights like that, and he he was nervous, and he hadn't got the collar off the dog. He hadn't realized he had the collar on, and he was he was telling them, uh, "Let my dog get her eyes adjusted before I bring her over in the pit." And he realized he had the collar on her. She was leaning over the pit. Uh, he, he as he got the collar off, and had her almost in. They turned loose their dog, mm. and that dog got a vicious shoulder hold on the face, bitch, and slammed her head up against the wall to where she could. I mean, it just totally just idled, almost knocked her out. And so she was just a shaking to carry on with that dog. I said, well, Lord, it's the end of this. And uh, she, uh, I don't know how she did it. She got up on her feet and she pulled her, actually pulled her shoulder out of that dog's mouth. Did her, did her turn around, turn, and went right back up. I thought she was going to go into the back back legs. But she turned, well, she would do that. But she come around and went right up in that dog where that dog's throat touches the chest bone breastbone or whatever pushed her right back up in the corner and she she brought it together and that dog just leaned his head over like it went to sleep it did and so that was two that was two there and then the other one this is where bass would grab he grabbed up the the what do you call it the, the money they take the gate money he took up both times. He took up the gate money, and, he, and then when he saw what was going down, he jumped in the car and run off down the road. That's when everybody quit fooling with him after that. And then later, he went long after that, he died of a heart attack. And uh, of course, Katie in it, she got the dogs, all of the dogs. But one of them was a bitch Katie had called Mouthy, and she went into Rage, that Rage dog, Johnny Johnson's Rage. That lasted about maybe three minutes tops. And it was over with another another kill. And then the other one, of all the dogs they t- the best decided to try was uh, Molly B. Mm. And when Molly B was around, I just tell anybody, the best thing to do with Molly B is let her be. <laughs> I mean, that was, oh, my Lord. You talk about a, a killing machine. Yeah. You ever see a, 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 lion, a lion on Africa hit hit a, a zebra full force, yeah. running, running full force, hit a zebra? Well, that's, that's how she, that's, that, that's Molly B. And when, when they released them dogs, she hit a red ball, a big, it was a big, uh, it was a big red ball bitch he had. He said he, she, she, she'd catch Molly B on the head and all and wear her out. But I suspect what he was doing all along was he was just trying to get gate money because it, it drew a lot of crowds, you know. Yeah. And get all that gate money and run off with the gate money. He, I don't think he had any chance of winning. But I do know this. He liked to keep a cigar in his mouth. And when he saw Molly B, when Molly B hit that, hit that female, red boy female, mm-hmm. that female dog, she went to squalling. Uh, Bass's eyes got, I mean, it, it's like he was in shock. His eyes got real big and he <laughs> almost swallowed that, that cigar. And he he when he saw that he turned around and pushed his way through the crowd, went outside, jumped in his car in a whole buggy, and left Katie there all by herself. And and Jacobs and all those Indians, boy, they were they were out for blood. They were bad. Dang, <laughs> I'll I'll be mad too, bro. Dang. And she told him, please, please don't hurt me. I'm a woman. She said, don't hurt me. I'm Dang. a woman. I got you put her down home. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. But so did so, you? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, so you know that's one of the reasons I, I didn't see. But now, you know, if you talk, you talk with uh, uh, EWO. He, he there's about three strands of those red boy dogs, and some of them might have been crosses. Yeah, that were pretty. That they said were good dogs. So I'm not. I'm not debating that. I ain't saying every one of them dogs that would come off Red Boy didn't have a mouth and weren't good dogs. But see, a lot of that they did they did amongst themselves up there uh, in Pembroke and ran in those areas. A lot of it they were doing amongst themselves. And mm-hmm. Indians. Yeah, yeah. And Vernon told me, he said, Johnny, I can't never get no match like that. I said, he said, I, I try to match them. They won't, they won't match me. He said, I can't get I can't get none of them kind of matches. Not, not that, you know, it would have been easier or harder or whatever. Yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, they just, uh, 
I think, see, what I believe, Jocko is what made them dogs. They always say Red Boy Jocko is the Jocko dog that made them dogs. He put the he put the body in them. He put the power and the strength in them. And see, the the key thing with them with them them Jocko Red Boy or whatever they want to call them, they if you you had a forty five pound Jocko Red Boy dog, it, it weighed forty five pounds. A lot of these local dogs, if you you brought in a forty five pound dog, weighed the same weight. That Jocko dog, he'd be probably six inches longer. He would uh, he would be taller. I mean, just a bigger, bigger dog. Yeah, it's kind of like the heavyweights. You know, mm-hmm. they really could weigh some of them weigh two hundred fifty pounds and look normal. Mm-hmm. But they, you know, they, they they trim them down and they go at you know they go at a much lighter weight. And so that's kind of where them Jocko dogs were. They were they were big dogs for their weight. And they were also uh, really strong dogs, yeah. and they they had a lot of the a lot of the foul fighting techniques from that Hank dog because he was a he was a backhand dog. I mean, he would go to the backhand, and uh, and so they had a lot of that trait too. I saw uh, Jocko's uh, might have been his last show before Porter got arrested and all his dogs were destroyed. Uh, I didn't know Porter, Porter personally. I just. I don't even know what he looked like. I just know I was up at his place on that last show because uh, Porter had bought Jocko. And uh, I, I believe it was going into a Crenshaw dog. And uh, he, uh, that thing was, that thing was a pretty, pretty, pretty tough match. And it went, it went tit for tat there. And finally both dogs were laying down. And uh, Mr. Chavis, he hollered over there. He said, Jocko. He said, Jocko, you never know to kill that dog. And believe it or not, that sucker raised up and went right into that dog's <laughs> soft underbelly and took him out. Now, he also said this. He said, Jocko, get up there and kill that dog. You kill that dog, I'll kiss your, I don't have to say arse. Yeah. So I'll kiss your arse. I'm going to tell you what. He made, it, he made it good. <laughs> I saw him do it. After his own, he raised his tail up and he did what he what he said he was going to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, he he told him to get up. He told him to get up. He got up. He got he. Well, he did, he just raised up and they were both laying down. One he one head was they were one head was toward Jocko Stifles and Jocko's head was at uh, the other dog Stifles, and they were like they were like, like out of holes trying to catch their air or whatever. Yeah, and. uh that's what Mr. Chavis said, Jocko, get up there, kill that dog. And he he, he raised up and went right in that good because he was a he would go to that back end. That's where he liked to go. He went right in that soft underbelly of that dog and that 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 was the deciding factor on that. And then later Porter Porter got uh he got busted and all his dogs they confiscated all his dogs and put them to sleep. They he had one little dog off my yard that was off of the Hank, directly off the Hank dog, and my little Tina bitch, her name was Brandy. And, uh, he was planning on breeding her back to the Jocko dog. And she was a, she was a, uh, she was a really good dog, but she was, she was a chewer and chewed out all her teeth. She didn't have a, made a good, a good roll dog because you could just grab and pull her right off. She didn't have no teeth. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, he was going to try to try to raise a litter off of her and see what they come up with, but. Yeah, all them dogs got destroyed. Damn. Did you uh, see uh, Hank's sister, uh, Gilman's chipper? Did you ever see her before? Or did you know her? No, I never saw uh, any of those. Uh, only dogs I saw, I saw, uh, I think I was in, I know, maybe, I saw the easy dog. That was down, in, that, that might have been out in Mississippi. I'm not sure there. The other one was in Texas. I saw one one there, uh, but I never saw. I, I did. I did see Mister Gilman him himself, but I never really really got to talk to him. I saw Maurice Carver. I I shook his hand, spoke to him, but I didn't. I didn't know none of them. You know, I was an outsider. I, they didn't know me, and I really didn't know them. And a lot of a lot yeah. of them told me they ain't gonna talk with you too much, or they don't know who you are. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I saw Gilman, and I saw, uh, he was a big man, Gilman was. And uh, I saw Don Maloney. He always dressed up like a, he, he dressed up like a dandy, like a, like some of them cowboy gamblers or whatever with all the fancy hats and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. He's real dick. He was real decked out that day. And uh, I see there was another one. Uh, uh, I, I, I did see Stenson and Glover when they when they when that show went down on, on that last show with that Easy Dog. It's an uh, ironic story on that with uh, Mayfield. Mm. Mayfield. Kennard, Leo Kennard matched into uh, Lonzo Pratt. And uh, Lonzo was using his mic dog, beautiful dog. Vernon saw him and he knew Lonzo. Uh, I, I, I knew Lonzo and spoke to him, but I didn't really know, know him. Never been on his dog yard. But he uh, he made that match with Kennard. And see, Kennard now was figuring he was going to drive all the way North Carolina, all the way out there to Mississippi, drive that dog all the way out there. But 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 uh, Pratt was a very smart fella, and he had a friend that had a had a uh, an airplane, mm. had a good air, air a pilot. And what he did was he put most of, the majority of the keep on back there, and then about the, possibly the last week he and he might have stayed at Eli Bush's place. I'm not sure exactly where he stayed now. Uh, or Junior Bush, his name was Junior Bush. Uh, but he flew out there right in, right in Canard's backyard and had that dog rested up. And, and of course, uh, when they, and then Don, he came in with a big old, I don't even want to call them 10 gallon hats, this huge big hat. And you can see it if you have any of the old Pete Sparks magazines, you can see, see what he's doing in, in the handling. Uh, when it comes time for Mike to scratch, he would try to cover that dog with that hat. Man. But it didn't work. And Mike, Mike wiped that dog out. And so here we go. All these years later, he he, he matched into Stenson and Glover, and they have a dog. Uh, she was, There was two of those dogs. Both of them were champions. Uh, really bad bulldogs. Uh, 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 one of them was... Uh, I forgot what her name was, but she was off a of Zebo and maybe a Kobe bred bitch of, of sorts. But they, that's the dog they used. And both dogs were in immaculate condition. I mean, immaculate condition. And, uh, but the, the problem with, uh, Don's dog, she was, she liked that front end. And that's, you don't go into a, you don't go into a Pratt, Lonzo Pratt dog back then that, that just wants to do the front end. Yeah. You better have something to eat that head up, eat that head up, and maybe go to the back end. You don't want to go, you don't want to trade. He has devastating back dogs, and that's where they love to live. And they go up their eyeballs in your dog's chest. Well, that's what happened. They went they went together, and they were in tip-top shape. But as that, as that thing went systematically on, and it didn't go a real long time, as I remember. But that Zebo bitch just slowly bit that easy bitch right down in the floor. She just bit, bite, bite right on down in the floor. And she lost. So it was kind of ironic, you know, that Lonzo beat, beat Don them with the Mike dog a good many years back. And then here it is later on, another one of Lonzo's dogs beats, beats him again, <laughs> beats Mayfield again. Dang. Yeah. Good old so what, days, man. Uh, Good old days. Oh, yeah. I, it'll never be like it was. There was a fella called me a while back. He, he said he was going to do something. And then he called me back later, within a couple, a day or two. And his dog had gotten ear bites. And he won't know whether they are to go with the dog. Mm. I said, no. I said, because he made the mention that when the vet put the drops in the dog's ear for, for the infection. Yeah. Uh, so I think they'd already give the dog uh, ear, some ear bite powder and all, and the vet didn't see the, he didn't see the bites, but he saw the infection from the bites. And so I said, you just made up, you know, Annie up and paid up, paid up for it. 
learn, learn a lesson. I said, uh, keep it here by saying your dog's part of the conditioning. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so a, a lot of young fellows would ask me, they want to ask me about questions like that, about conditioning and all that. Uh, one thing that I tell them is if you're going to use kibble feed, you got to do it. If you read real closely between the lines on James Crenshaw's keep, he always arrived at the site 30 hours prior. Notice, notice the 30 hours. Mm-hmm. And so if you do the kibble, you got to, you got to, on the rest days, you got to cycle that dog out on a 30 hour cycle up to the way day. You got to count backwards. Yeah. A lot of these dog men, and you got to stop thinking when you, when you feed your dogs every day, you generally feed them at a certain time. You feed them one time a day. Well, when you start working a dog, uh, you, you're, even from the very beginning, you are no longer feeding on a 24 hour cycle. Yeah. You're no longer doing that. And the longer the keep gets, the longer the feed gets further out. And then being it's, being it's kibble too, uh, it will, uh, it stays in the dog longer. Uh, and so that's when you have to get to 30. And there's some that say they perfect a raw, a raw keep. And I, I that's, that's great. There's always something to learn. Uh, the, the raw keep, you could probably draw it back to maybe 26 hours to be safe. Yeah. Or the food, the food's going to pass raw, the raw, just straight raw food is going to go through faster. Uh, but, but what a lot of them would do is they would put the dog on the rest days. They would, uh, put the dog back on a feeding once a day, like 24 hours. And by the time they get around to show time, they, they ain't going to be able to clean that dog out. And then the dog runs hot. Yeah. So they think it was something else, but the dog runs hot. If they got anything in their guts, it will cause them to run hot. Hey, Mister Johnny, and hold on. Can you hold on? Is, can you hold on for a split second, Mister Johnny? Yeah, hold on for a split second. I'm back. I'm back now. Sorry about that. We were speaking on the key. Sorry. Right. right. The another mistake that's made is they'll they'll, uh, they'll ask me. They've asked me questions in the past. Now I I've, I did I didn't do a lot of dogs. Vernon he uh, he was he was the dog man. I mean he was the conditioner. He knew what. So he had he had a he had a place on the marine on that marine base. He was a master staff sergeant. He would have them, them boys walk his dogs in the morning, and then he had a big. He he'd go back on them, back there on them uh, where they run them tanks through them swamps, big old wide soft roads, and he he had them. He had some mechanic. He was a he was a supply sergeant. And he had them fellas make him something where he could idle that car that truck down where he could run a certain speed, like maybe four to five miles per hour. And then he had had them in a metal shop. He had them build him a thing that went over the hood of the hood of the truck and an arm went all the way out to where the dog was attached to sort of like what you do on a swing and jenny and he had it set up where he could release the hook if he wanted to and the dog would be far enough from the truck and he didn't worry about him running up under the truck and he'd take them dogs down through there and just jog them just steady jog them out he'd lope them some and jog them some and then if a possum or something crossed that road that dog would see the, the, the eyes shining on that possum you see him hit that, he'd hit that, he'd bring that line real t- tight. And so then he would release him, and that dog would probably sprint a good 50 to maybe 100 yards sprint wide open and hit that possum. And then he'd just ease on up there to him, break him off the possum, throw the possum in the woods, 
and he walked in, hand walked dog a little a ways, you know, then his breathing get more normal. And he took him up and go again. He usually did about, depending on the size of the dog, he'd do anywhere from five, eight to 12 miles or, or, or that type of road work. And he had those Marines, them young, young Marines that would uh, help him, you know, during the day. And if he had a bad weather situation, he had these big old hangar bays on that base, and some of them didn't have concrete in them. He would take, he, he'd do it, he'd use a treadmill and, and, and then hand walk them. They were big enough where you could hand walk them in there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and uh, he said he never went over 30 minutes on a treadmill. He did not like a treadmill. He said there's too much danger in a treadmill of messing that dog's kidneys up, burning her feet out, and things like that. He never, he never used, he never used it only when he had to. Mm-hmm. And uh, so him and Crenshaw were very, very similar in the way they did things. And and and, and, and uh, another thing they would ask me. They'd ask me, and people don't, they don't take it into account. They say, they, they'd ask me some questions, and I say, well, first of all, where do you live? Yeah. What part of the country, what part of the country do you live in? And if they live, you know, if they lived up north, I said, well, that's cold weather up there in the wintertime, right? I said, well, you're going to have to use, use a, a higher protein and fat type feed to keep that dog warm in that kind of climate. Yeah, and I was, and I and then the other one was you know if you're down here where we at, you particularly in the summertime you would use a lower protein and less uh, lower fat if you're going to if you're going to go with the uh, you know the kibble, mm-hmm. add the kibble, and so you know you got you got to ratio that stuff out. And then I also advised I said don't ever go over 500 miles in any direction. Because so if you go much further than that, and the dog travels, they don't. A lot of them dehydrate. Yeah. If you drive too far, with they'll get dehydrated. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, so I would tell them that they think I was crazy. <laughs> and they probably found out the hard way, though, if they ever had it. Got yeah. That situation. Yeah, uh, and see, around here. He, uh, and the other thing I tell about this is, is what kind of bloodlines you got. If you got a lot of them Eli Mudro kinds of dogs, they're gonna be a lot of them. Are going to, they're gonna be a lot of them. Gonna be hard bite bar, barn stormers. Yeah. I said you don't bring that sucker out in the hot summertime. Mm-hmm. And I said you don't you don't you don't pull him as tight either. You pull him about three ribs and leave a little back on him. Leave the back on him because you want him strong as he can be. But you don't uh, pull him raw. You don't raw bone the dog. Yeah. And I said personally, I love the Dibo strand of dogs. I was always, well, I always liked them. I said, but they ain't necessarily deep, deep game. And I said, if you want to know for sure if yours are deep game, and of course, uh, EWO told me he knew one fella that had some of them that they were deep game because that guy checked them hard. I said, I'll tell you how you can find out how game they are. Break him out in the summertime. You work a little, put some wind in him. Bring him out in the summertime on a bigger dog and let him get let him get extra hot and see what happens. Yeah. I said, if he goes on, because that's what Bass over Red Bull, he checked him in the hot summertime. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know when you're going to go on that There's different styles of bloodlines, different styles of dogs. And a good dog man knows the styles and the strengths and the weaknesses. And uh, they have a real powerful, strong, hard going dogs. They, they, they best for the winter time. And they have, they have good, lanky dogs that you can pull lean. Uh, and, and like a lot of red boy dogs, they, they would fare better during the hot weather. Because Katie, that's how Katie, that's what Katie would do. She'd, the boys would come out of them mountains, and it didn't really much matter if they came in the winter or if they came in the summertime. But he, she wanted them in the summertime. And they dropped that out of them mountains. And I, one, I went to, uh, one of them I was with to, that they, them guys' dogs were sitting out there under the shade trees, and they were just, they were just a half of the tongues was out of their <laughs> mouth. They were not used to that kind of weather. <laughs> Katie, Katie would whip them. <laughs> yep, not used to the weather. Yep, so all that plays a factor. Mm-hmm. And uh, down here where me and you live, 
A cat meal's fine. I don't have nothing against a cat meal. I like a cat meal. But you, how many dogs you know run them? Yeah, you're right about that. I don't. I don't know many that run them. And I had I had an eighty foot one. And also, it gets cold down here with, with this humidity. And I'm, I'm standing out there. You know that that, that, that type of meal works the best in desert weather, like down in Texas and places like that. Yeah. Uh, and it, it, it is a good, it's a good, it's a very good way to do it. And of course, you got to know how to build it and how to set it up right. But and I'm standing out there in the cold. I mean, it's cold, and and that dog running, and the wind is blowing on us. And I said, I don't know. This, this, we ain't gonna be doing this a long time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so, what I had to do, what I had to do is, I built me about an 18 foot round table. But I, I, I built it differently than what most people build them. I used a whole uh, rear end of a positive traction rear end with the hog head gears in it. Everything was intact. And uh, I built it out 18 foot. And I, knew, I, and I padded it. I didn't over pad it, but I padded it. And uh, I put a, I was able to see some militant. He worked for Sunoco. And he could get the, that felt, that cotton felt that they used. Uh, to, to whatever they used it for, and uh, I, I got a bunch of that. And that's what I that felt won't burn a dog's feet like carpet will, and uh, so that's what I used. And uh, yeah, I, it run knee high. I could sit down in a chair, and the table was knee high to me, and I could touch the dog, handle the dog, and so I would use that and hand walk it. And uh, I beat with a with a dog Roy Braddock had. He had a heck of a dog called Mr. Clean. Solid white dog, red nose, yellow eyes, red toenails. And uh, he's in the pedigrees on uh, that side that I was on. I put his pedigree in there. Uh, He he was a heck of a dog. He was something else. And uh, we went into Lonzo Pratt, and me and my wife were McLean. We we worked him three times a day. We did a lot of hand walking. She, she would hand walk him in the morning, and I know I get up early in the morning, hand walk him, shoot him, hand walk him out about in the middle of the day. Then when I come in that night, I would hand walk him and do and do do some the table work. Mm-hmm. And and uh, we had him in good shape. And uh, them rascals had us brewing that bunch. Well, we went up there, so we went all the way up there to them. And uh, they rode us around in them hills around and around. They, they knew exactly where to go, but they rode us around must have been an hour. <laughs> and McLean got he got sick. And so Roy, he's all bad, upset, and he didn't, they didn't want to weigh the dogs. So they didn't even weigh them. And there was Lonzo with his dog sitting in, the, in his corner, ready to go rest and whatnot. And, he, and with all that, when Roy was bringing McLean over into the pit, he turned loose on us, and he got a got a good chest hole, and it, and it looked it looked bad. And then over that old McLean dog just reached over there and caught that dog by the nose, pulled him out. Then he then he grabbed him, grabbed him into deep down in the burr of the ear, and he just worked on him. And it was it didn't last it probably didn't last twenty minutes. That dog wouldn't scratch. He was he was over with. Dang. Mm. And uh, and I, I'm gonna try to think. What the other, oh, the other boys with that Hank dog, me and Andy Al, uh, did him to go into that. But so I didn't do a bunch of dogs. Yeah. Because I, I just couldn't. I couldn't take the chance of. Uh, I had a very good job, and uh, I, I stayed in the background. I understand uh, that. Yeah, I let Vernon get all the glory. <laughs> hey, ain't nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, he like. I did anyhow, so I let him. A lot, of, a lot of people do not like him. I, it, it's kind of like old California Jack. Uh, California Jack was an intelligent man, and when I was looking at his dogs, pictures of them, I thought them dogs were 38, 42, something pound dogs. And them dogs was like 32, 34. They were like them Jocko dogs, Rebel dogs. They were big dogs for their weight. Mm. I said, dang. Dang. But he was a very intelligent man, and he knew. I think he knew how to do, do condition dogs. And all. I think he did. He did good. Yeah. Uh, but uh, one, let me tell you this one uh, other one. Right. 
So many of them were red boys. I say, he doesn't tell you about them. Uh, they, some of them were red, full red boys. Some of them were crosses. There was some of them red boy dogs supposed to start showing up with mouth on them and tough eyes. Well, Bailey, Bailey down there, he lived right down the road from Vernon. He he got red boy dog. He had red boy dogs, uh, Mister Bailey, and he would uh, breed Vernon's dogs or his stud dogs and use them. And he got some good dogs off of that. And did Vernon sent three, three, they were out of three different litters of his breed to that boy, uh, Joe, oh, I didn't know his name. He's right up there from North Carolina, maybe Tennessee. Uh, good Lord, I should remember. I should have wrote his name down. But he bought three sets of those puppies. Man. And, and uh, one of them ended up being grand champion, grand champion, out, out, it's Outback's grand champion junior. That was one of those dogs when he, you know, when he got grown. He was, and then uh, Vernon asked, asked Bailey later on, he said, well, whatever happened to them dogs? Uh, well, what's that guy's name? Uh, he's noted for, he, had, he, he, liked, he really liked the red boy dogs. I wish I could think of his name right this minute, but uh, him and I said him and Bailey were buddies. Uh, but Bailey said he probably <laughs> he told him, he said he probably he probably changed their papers and put red boy dogs on them or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> he ain't no laughed. Ain't <laughs> but no some of them dogs started showing up. There was a guy. I think mean, his last name was Jackson too. He was in uh he was in uh Georgia. He had a dog with Jackson. I forgot what he called that dog. But them dogs looked at, what was that? That guy's name popped in my head, popped back out. One of them, what was them dogs' names? But it, some of them dogs that fella had pictures of, they they were real stout. Real, real stout, big bones and, you know, and all that. And I said, wow. That's, that's kind of, that's, yeah. you know, I, Maybe kind of wonder, but uh, and anyhow, they uh, they did they did. I don't know what all happened to those dogs. What they did with them? Uh, EWS said he saw one of them, and the guys were rolling into death. They were he was just a young puppy. They were rolling when he was a puppy. They were rolling and rolling and rolling, and he was something. I think he finally died or something happened to him, but. Well, you got to ask me, ask me some other questions. I, I don't reckon I want to keep rambling too much. Oh, yeah. Something, oh, yeah. something that you, Go ahead. Just. Well, well, I you, I didn't you, know you pretty knew, well all those dogs. You knew Mr. Burns pretty well? I knew Mr. Burns real well. He was a fine fella. What, um, <laughs> what do you think would have been his crap, number one uh, dog? It, uh, I'd have to pull it up on, on that pedigree. Uh, I, I've seen I've seen the pictures of the dog. Uh, you know, I didn't, he, at the end, he got into the, the to the Jocko Red Boy stuff. Yeah. And I, I didn't. Uh, by by then, you know, I was out of the dog game and all that, so I didn't. Yeah. I never went back there to see him. But he uh, that's when he that's when he finally come up with some good started getting some good dogs, and. Uh, I can't name the name of that dog, but I know Tan or somebody went on there because he's another fella down your way. He's another fella down your way that's got some of the, some of that bloodline from Mister Tan, which he was a young boy. I can't think of his name right this minute, but he was a young boy when me and Vernon was around. You know, going down there in Charleston and all that. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And uh. But Mr. Burns, uh, he, uh, I think Tan or somebody went down there and put something on that dog and it, it, uh, castrating. That was the dog got castrated. Yeah, yeah. And that was one of his, one of his prized dogs. Okay. If they done that to him, maybe all that bad luck that happened later on down the road, and that might be. That be what goes around comes around. That might could have been some of that. Yeah, <laughs> right. Because Mr. Burns never, 
he now he never cheated nobody. He never spoke spoke out spoke one way or the other. He was just a he was just a nice, real nice gentleman. And if he won, he won. If he lost, he lost. He didn't he didn't have nothing to say one way or the other. Yeah, yeah. No. And, uh, no. I ain't gonna hold you here all day or nothing like that. And um, I, I did have some questions, but you, some of the stuff that you were saying, answered some of the questions that I had. So I ain't gonna ask you the same questions again. But I will ask right. you this: I'm gonna ask you this question to close off the interview. Can you remember the yeah. most exciting show you laid your eyes on? The most what? Can you re- remember the most exciting show you laid your eyes on? Well, for me personally, it was when I put a little dog, matched a little dog, a female, into Powell. Yeah. Uh, they had termite dogs. We had an awesome, we had a, I mean, there was one guy said he was going to sell his game chickens and get into dogs. I told him, I said, you'd be wasting your time. It takes too many years for all this. And I said, what you see going on down here, going on right now, you probably ain't going to see that but very often. Mm-hmm. But. That was that was a very exciting one for me personally, because I was personally in it, and uh, and uh, then uh, probably uh, oh Lord, I saw so many good dogs. I really did. Molly B was bad. That Rage dog, uh, uh, that that and that Argo dog. He Argo. I, I liked Argo better than I did Jocko. So you he see- was a you seen any Argo shows? I, I, no, I did not get to see them. Uh, cause McNeil did the work on them dogs. Okay. And uh, and uh, it was uh, it was a uh, his last name was McNeil, and that's where I got that car. So I got that Carver dog of mine. He was a Creel dog. He was pure brother sister breeding off of Carver's Creel. Mm-hmm. And when Scotty got that dog from Carver. He didn't call him up and say, I want such and such. I want such and such. He said, I just want a good, honest game uh, game uh, stud dog. I want a stud dog. And uh, he told him what he had and what what dogs he was looking at. And that was the dog he sent him. And he turned out, he, he won one or two shows with him and uh, beat, a, beat a dog off of Zebo with him. I know that for sure. And then... Uh, uh, then later on, it's a whole lot of stories of that stuff. I I ended up with him, and then I started breeding him. And, uh, and there's some, I ain't gonna call names because one of the person was a very good person. Yes. But I've never done that. But there was some 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 of them that got very very mad when I got that face bitch. Uh, the Chandler guy gave me that face bitch, and, and she's been offered to be sold on two or three occasions for five thousand dollars. Mm. and he gave her to me and there's a story behind that but there's some of them held a grudge on that and it was later they they come on my yard and broke my chuck dog's back and then later they poisoned another litter of pups that I was you know breeding up keep my I had a program going I pretty well almost had it intact I had a good strong line off that Bully Sun Art Missy stuff off of Holtz Jeremiah uh, and then the Lavasi Buster Dog. One through one through a, a bitch that I got from Sunny Sharkshire and then one and then, then the face bitch. She was face was a half sister to that 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 uh grand champion Gardner's grand champion uh Spike. Okay. She was a half uh, half sister to that dog. But she was off of Mayfield's Go Devil and, and I think Spike was off that Snooty Dog. But uh, so they they come they come on my yard while I was going out of town. I've uh, been out, I've been through a divorce and all. And I don't know what all was behind it all, and they poisoned her. Damn. And so when all that happened, that that just put me back about. I just pretty well undid you know what I had done to try to get going. Mm-hmm. They just pretty well undone it. Damn. And I was at that age, at my age at that time. And the way things were going in the dog game, where it was headed with that, uh, I just found I said, well, I got enough. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't doing it no more. I'm through. And so I get, I, you know, I got out of it. I got, 
got saved, got back in a good local church, and that's where I've been ever since. And so, and I say I talk occasionally about it with different people, but uh, but not just anybody and everybody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But, yes, sir. All right. Well, you know, you think of some other things, write it out. Like I say I knew a lot of those dog men, and I, I hope a lot of them that hear this don't think I'm trying to put everybody down. I'm not. Oh, no. I've had oh, no. just as many rank dogs as anybody's ever had. I didn't know what they, the truth of the matter is they don't nobody have a monopoly because these dogs will not breed they will not breed true to type every time like uh gang chickens will. Yeah. They they they, they, they just won't. And as they age, here's another thing. As they age, you know you might have a good produce, producing stud dog, after a certain age you need to quit. You need to go back to a younger dog. A lot of the, a lot of a lot of your game chicken men will not breed an old cock. They they they'll go to the they may stay at the same bloodline, but they'll go to the uh, a good younger cock. They won't keep breeding them old chickens because the sperm and the eggs get old, just like everything else. Yeah. And uh, and I one and one other thing I tell you that Mister, I had. I had all the dog magazines from bloodlines from, I was really knew bloodlines good. I had them from 1930, probably all the way through the forties, uh, fifties with those, uh, bloodline journals that they used to put out under UKC. Mm-hmm. And a lot of your old dog, pit dog men like Hensel, Tudor, Sadler, all those fellas, they wrote articles. They wrote articles, uh, in that magazine. And uh, one of the things he, Mr. Heisel said uh, about the old timer said to him was that the black, the color black, you know, black solid black dogs was not a bulldog color. Mm. Well, what it is is a terrier color, and a lot of the, you didn't see you didn't see a lot of uh, of black dogs. And where you started seeing more of them is when F.G. Henry, uh, Earl Tudor liked F.G. Henry's dogs, and it was down through them into those Dibo line of dogs. Those dogs, a lot of them dogs were black. And see, they were terriers. The word black was a terrier color. And he got, those dogs were coming directly from England. And most of them English dogs that Henry had, and, and some, of the, some of the older, older timers, they, they generally usually would come white or white with black tickets in the skin mm-hmm. or they came black. And so those English dogs, that's a lot of predominant color for them. <clears throat> and the, uh, and they had a more of a bull terrier appearance to them too. Not, not like this old English bull terrier we're talking about today, yeah. but uh, the old, old time bull terrier look. And, uh, and of course the Kobe dogs and all, they, they came, you know, white. And then you had some of those lighter dogs. They were red nose and so forth. But yeah. uh, I just thought I'd throw that in there. So if you get some good solid black, I mean real solid black dogs, uh, the, I always believe this. If you get a good solid black one with those black eyes, they don't, like looking through a keyhole, mm-hmm. hold on to them. See what they're going to do. Got a color don't make them gain. Uh, a white one with ticking, with those tickings in the skin. Particularly the females, they're generally be good producers. Them, and then a red smut. You get one of them reddish dogs with that black muzzle. A lot yeah. of times, those are good dogs. Yeah, yeah. I like those red smut. And so, all right, I'll let you, I'll let you go. And uh, if you think think of some more stuff, uh, write it all down. And uh, I'll try not to ramble so much. And oh and, no, uh, oh no, we maybe, we appreciate. I, I knew I knew pretty well all those dog men. Uh, I, I knew uh, Mr. Tealwell, I Miss Egan Skinner. Uh, uh, I knew uh, I never did really get to know James Crenshaw well. I knew him when I saw him. I spoke to him, but I didn't really get to know know him. Uh, as far as his local local dog, I mean, I knew Mr. Truett grew up around him. Mr. Ganey, uh, there was, was uh, some others around here, uh, but I, I knew all them. I knew Katie. Uh, but you know, I hope I got the Red Boy story straight. And like I said, if you want to read it more, see the siblings of Red Boy, you can see them on that uh, on that site, or you can pull it up, do a search and find it. Uh, but uh, and, we, and, 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 and as it goes, we'll never really know who the, who the sire was to Red Boy. No, nope. nope. I, I knew 
I feel like it was the Stidham dogs. Uh, that, 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 black, that black man had in North Carolina. Yeah. He, he had good dogs, and they used his dogs, but he never gave any credit about it. Yeah. And before I, before I learned all this from EWO, I, that man had done it all bad. You know, he done passed on. Yeah. Yeah. But, you we, know, we you never got know. some good red boys and just bring into some good crosses and whatnot. And, you know, but here's, here's what I always believed. Whatever anybody says about this or that, if, you, if it's your dogs and you happy with them and you feed them, your dogs, you happy with them and you feed them, it ain't nobody else's business. Right That's about the way that. I looked at it. Right about I don't that. mean I, I, I had fellas want to, they'd come to me and show me they got this dog bred a certain way. And I, and I messed up one time and told the boy the truth. He got mad at me. He got mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I found out after that, I just, yeah, that's nice. That's a nice looking dog. You know, they bring a guy and say, this is a Kobe dog. And I'm looking at him. Dang, he's a, a black dog and he's a Kobe dog. Oh, I said, well, all right. Uh, he didn't ever, every day, he never bought that little Kobe book and looked at all the pictures of them Kobe dogs. So, so there's certain traits and certain bloodlines. If you mm-hmm. got a real tight bloodline, it certain makes some dogs are going to look a certain way. Yeah. And uh, and there's always exceptions to all rules, regardless. Mm-hmm. But anyhow, you know, all I know is things are going, things are getting tougher. This is going to be a really bad year this year. And I don't know how it's all going to pan out. Uh, and it, it just today on the news, and I said, a lot of these dogs are not pit bull terriers. They're probably something else, mixed dogs or whatever. Uh, very bad people. People see people think they they get those dogs and they'll say, well, those, those are mean old dog men. They the ones that make them fight. They yeah. make them fight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See that kind of that kind of thinking. I'm gonna love the dog, and treat it right. You know, the dog gets about two years old and, and they in the house with another dog and. and 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 the other dog has been brow beating when brow breeding when it's a puppy. When that when that bitch or that dog comes into their full maturity, and that dog challenges him again, then all of a sudden a Jekyll Hyde environment takes place, and they don't know what to, they don't know how to deal with that because they don't know nothing about break sticks or nothing like that. Yeah, and so and yep. that's, that's, that's I, a lot of that stuff is biting people, or a lot of it's am staffs. Uh, First of all, I don't know what size them dogs have eight to make pit bulls and mauled a fourteen year old a fourteen month old boy. I don't know if they was puppies. You know, I don't know what they were, but I would think they were full grown dogs that it took him apart. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know you just don't know the whole story and the whole scenario. They just they just like to put that headline up there. But y'all fellas better be careful because they had a I saw something on YouTube. There's something happened on a dog, a dog show, some dog shows where you're showing dogs, uh, you know, keep just keep dogs showing you dogs. But that, that showing down there, something down there, down Alabama, somewhere down that way, there's something happened down there. And uh, the fellas ain't really dedicated. They'll start telling on everybody. Yep. Mm-hmm. Keep your group close. Don't. I tell I tell them. If, you know, even a good dog and good dog shows, just do one. Don't go do bunches of them. Go do one and go home mm-hmm. and take the dog and let have you another good partner with you. And take the dog and let him keep that dog by itself on his place. You know, until you get ready to show the dog again. Let it, and don't take it back to your place. Yeah. And I, also, the other last one I say, you better all your property and stuff. You better put it. In, Put it in your children's names. <laughs> hey, you better do something. <laughs> you better do that too. If something goes south on you. Uh-huh. Them lawyers, all them, all them lawyers are looking for is what they can get. Yep. You right about that. That's all. Yep. All right, my friend. I, I appreciate you. I hope uh, I hope my interview wasn't real boring. Oh no, oh, no. A lot. great interview, man. Well, I, I appreciate you. It. Sorry about that. Well, I'm to see it on uh, YouTube. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It'll be up there uh, probably tonight. I probably have it tonight later okay. on this evening. Okay. So if any, any of them uh, start asking questions, you know, maybe a little later, I'll write the questions down. And maybe a little later, if you want to do, uh, we well, ain't got to do as long as we did today. 
but you know, a little later on, uh, I might, you know, answer answer some more of those questions. Yeah. But I've seen a bunch of it, and I've seen a lot of. I tell you what, I did see. I saw more good dogs, very good dogs, lose due to poor conditioning than I ever see it, saw any win. Yeah. You, you, man, can't you can't put them up right? You don't know how to do it. And you ain't going to learn how to do it until you get some sound, solid. And, and listen, Crenshaw, his key, he ain't lying. Everything he's saying, he's telling the absolute truth. A lot of people who read that and say, oh, he's making that up. Uh, I've, I've, I've heard Mr. Till tell give people some advice, and they thought he was crazy. And I said, he wasn't lying to you. He was telling you the straight. It, it, ain't, no, it ain't nothing but hard work. I mean, you got to know how to feed right, but most of it ain't nothing but pure hard work. Mm-hmm. It ain't. It ain't nothing. It ain't no easy way about doing it. It's hard, and uh, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of your time. And a person ain't willing to take the time and put in the hard work. They're never going to bring it. And, and also, the only other way they're going to learn is pre-keeping, uh, pre-keeping, and learning those methods and pre-keeping when they go and look at the dogs if they're good enough to enter in a dog show. Yeah. If they do short six week pre-keeps. They do enough of them, they'll learn a lot there and get better. And that's the only other thing that uh, I, one of the things I would advise anybody. I put a lot of that on that, uh, on that site. So, uh, well, all right, I'm a quit. I know, I know you, you, oh, you no. thought about it at all. Oh, yeah. no, man. All right. Well, anyhow, you have a nice day and, uh, be, you know, better, better be very, very, very careful. <laughs> hey, you, let, let me go ahead. You don't know how to fool him. Learn them how to pull them weights and how to show real pretty. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Y'all brothers and sisters heard that down in the chat. I want to say big salute to all the brothers and sisters down in the chat. Y'all don't forget to hit that like button up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Big appreciation to my brother, brother uh, Mr. Young, giving me the great, great interview Never bored one second of the whole interview, my brother, and I appreciate it. I appreciate you coming in. Y'all stay safe out there. Y'all stay legal out there when it comes to these dogs. When it comes to anything, y'all stay legal out there. And, and like I say, keep enjoying and making this 2024 a great year. PBK9s, and I'm out.